I'm Father Pullman. And I'm Father Schumacher. And we, we are, are The Associates. And we're back. Happy Advent. We are here with a special guest today, a, a second class relic of Blessed Solanus Casey. I think this goes very well with a question that we have this week. What is a good practice or recommendation for Catholics for daily devotion? Well, daily devotion begins from the prayer of the church, I think. We ought to be praying with the church even when we're not at church. Um, and one of the best ways to do that is to incorporate the liturgical calendar into your daily prayer. Um, for example, we're right at the beginning of Advent, so your prayer at home should probably reflect that in some way. People already do a lot of this kind of thing, right? Um, Advent wreaths are very common, uh, or putting candles in the windows of your house, or getting one of those Advent calendars and opening only one door every day. Kind of a fun thing. Um, and it helps us to live kind of sacred time in this way. It, that turns every day, not from just yet another day and kind of time just keeps repeating itself to a kind of time that flows toward its final end um, where we hope to be in heaven. So turn your prayer into this kind of directed time uh, by using the liturgical calendar. Do you have any? I would like to, ta to uh, give a little the theology that uh, comes from uh, the, the right understanding of the human person. So what is the purpose of devotional prayer? It may be described in a number of ways, but as Father was, was uh, pointing out, um, that it primarily should be liturgical. So any prayer that is devotional in the true sense will actually give me a greater warmth and fervency when I enter into the liturgical prayer of the church. And how does devotional prayer do this? Actually, by untethering and severing and uh, freeing me from the attachments to this world that make things that are truly spiritual, that are truly holy, give me a certain, if I'm not attached, then, uh, then it frees my soul to rise up and, and take delight in the things that are above. And so uh, that is one of the goals of, of, of Catholic devotional life, to make me benefit more and delight in true liturgical prayer. So um, what is this going to look like practically? Um, one suggestion that, that came to us as we were talking over this is the um, reading of some of the Mass texts. Um, you could actually come to Mass every day, but even if you don't come to Mass, or even if you have come to Mass and want to spend some more time praying, um, maybe use the entrance antiphon and the collect, the, the opening prayer for the day, um, as kind of fuel for your personal prayer at home or uh, spending a little bit more time in the church. Um, that would be a very good liturgical way to enter into, especially in a strong season like Advent, where the prayers do change every day, um, to really enter into uh, that season. Um, but the Catholics should be living the devotional life all the time. So maybe Saints Days as they come along, um, you do something special for the Saints Day, one that's coming up very soon. Again, that people have a kind of natural uh, affinity for is St. Nicholas Day. So you do something special for St. Nicholas Day, especially if you've got children at home. Doing something special at dinner time or in your family prayer before bed um, is a really good way to introduce them to uh, the richness of the liturgical year as well. There's uh, a couple other things that should be said uh, in any discussion of how a Catholic lives the devotional life. Um, we've got prayer, we've got fasting, and we've got almsgiving, right? Those are the three kind of basic spiritual works that uh, a Christian should do. Comes to us from the Jewish tradition. Jesus talks about them on the Sermon on the Mount. So your daily life, or maybe more broadly, your weekly life, think of it in, in terms of weekly cycles, should include all three of those elements daily prayer, um, some kind of deliberate fasting or mortification, and some kind of deliberate charitable work. So note how all three of the things uh, culminate together uh, in the human person. Prayer, so I'm exercising the spiritual faculty of my, my mind and my will. So I'm, I'm, I'm using this, that spiritual part of me on a daily basis. Um, so that's going to lend itself to, to prayer with the liturgy of the church. Uh, fasting, 
I'm very clearly um, telling my body that it is second to my soul. And then uh, the almsgiving, those, those works of charity and giving, most especially to the poor, those in need, uh, comforting those who are sick and, and, and seeing Christ in the other. Well, that helps me with eyes of faith uh, view my entire life, my surroundings, uh, with the true, uh, that true view of faith. So we have a great question in regards to this. Uh, what's the role of, of mortifications in our spiritual lives, and how often should we do them? The role of mortifications, Father's already begun to speak about, is to put the body as part of the human being into its proper place. The body is not evil. Very clearly, the body is good. God gave us the whole of physical creation, and he delights in it. But the problem of sin is that it causes our body and our lower passions to rise up against the correct ordering of intellect, will, passions, body. Um, so when we do things like fast, we are training our passions through the use of our physical existence, our physical body, to listen to God first through the intellect, through the will. So we do things like fasting. Fasting is the most obvious one. You give up some kind of food or drink, um, either for an extended period of time or at a particular moment, you say no to something that in itself is good or neutral. Um, this can be extended more broadly into any kind of self-discipline, self-denial. Um, um, so fasting is the most obvious of the um, mortifications, but you can do things like turn your phone off or turn your computer off or take a cold shower, or um, do something deliberately that you wouldn't want to do just on your own, but you recognize that it is a good discipline. Now, how frequently should we do something like this, Father? Well, I, I think one thing is, uh, you know, our Lord gives those parables, uh, uh, like such as a, uh, a king that is about to enter into a battle with another king. He is to size up the, the, the field and see if he has the resources to, uh, to, to engage in battle or if he needs to entreat for peace. Um, basically, um, how much can you do, not tomorrow and not just this week, but how, long, but, but how, uh, how can you choose a penance that is uh, sustainable? Sustainable and for how long? Is it just for Advent? Is it something that uh, for, for your entire life? These are practical considerations. And again, we can take our cue from the life of the church. Every one of us as Catholics are still bound uh, to offer some form of penance every Friday, except for those days where there are solemnities. And even that, it's still a good idea. Whether it's abstaining from meat or some alternate penance, we should start with once a week. Traditionally in the church, Wednesday was a secondary but also wide, widespread day for undergoing penance. So there's that, there's that aspect, and then there's something else, just again to keep, keep in uh, context here. Uh, the church used to have widespread mandatory penances depending on where you went. Uh, I believe it was St. Augustine who uh, went, went to Rome, and, and there was a question about, you know, we were accustomed to doing fasting on Friday and Saturday. Here in Rome, they only do it on Friday. Which do I observe? I believe that's where the, we get when in Rome. Well, uh, it's easier to do greater penances when we do them together. Uh, so another aspect that depend on your circumstances, does your family do things together? And do they do spiritual things together? Uh, that's another great aspect to actually think about. Right, so I think I would start with Friday abstinence from meat and introduce it for your whole family so that everyone's doing it together and it becomes much more ordinary in that way. St. Jose Maria, one of the great masters of the ordinary in the Christian life, um, suggests that we ought to be doing some kind of mortification every time we sit down for a meal. Now, that's maybe more than, you know, if, if this is a new idea to you, maybe don't start with that. Um, but the idea that we should be doing mortification constantly in this Christian life, and we should be doing things that are possible for us. This is another reason to bring it right back to where we started with the liturgical life. Um, this is why the church has seasons, because it is good for us to do a little bit more, a little bit extra, push ourselves a little harder, with the recognition that we probably can't keep that up forever. So during Advent, maybe do a little bit more than you're used to doing. 
with the knowledge that when you get to Christmas, you're going to be like, oh, okay, that was good, but I'm glad that it's over now. <laughs> um, again, with Lent, you know, we give up something extra. We do something more during Lent with the knowledge that when Easter comes, we're going to let down a little bit, um, and that will, that will feel good for us, and it will help us um, in acquiring the spiritual goods that the Lord wishes to give us. So there is a disclaimer I think we need to insert here. The motive for, for, for fasting or any denial is not to lose weight. It's to enter into the spiritual life of the church. You will have a greater appreciation of the liturgical prayer, which is the, pr the church, uh, the, the prayer of the bride of Christ herself. And so that's what we're seeking. Um, that it is also good for us, well, thanks be to God. Click the logo right there to subscribe. Thanks for watching. New episodes come out every Wednesday.